Good morning, folks. We're watching plasma filaments dancing on the southeastern limb. We've got earth events, weather modification, magnetic life, the cosmos, and climate change today. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours with the southern coronal hole turning through. My eyes then go to the northeastern limb, finding bright spots, including a very high latitude brightness just behind the visible range. The solar wind is riding in low telemetry range this morning. All is calm geomagnetically and has been for a few days. Solar wind from that southern coronal hole should arrive around Tuesday, but still should be modest at best. The top quake of the last day hit magnitude 6 range in eastern Indonesia. That area takes sixes in stride, and otherwise it was a calm seismic day. And so we go to the weather where the record-setting snowfall in Rochester can be no small thing, and apparently now it's even less small. And then we're going to shift even further to the northeast where 12 feet of global warming have buried St. John's and parts of Newfoundland and Labrador. They've obliterated their snow records as well. 12 feet will do that. And it's from the bombogenesis hit low cell off the coast. See the red. The move over the water made the system explode with strength to deliver that incredible precipitation. There is more coming before they wake up tomorrow as a low is crossing into the region again right now to arrive this evening and through the night. So the surge of studies on space weather electric hazard to the United States continues. We've seen them spread to a number of other countries as well, but here they are pinning the highest risks in the strongest solar storms to the East Coast, Pacific Northwest, Upper Midwest, and the Denver metro area, which basically means you can either go wait for California to sink into the sea or sit under major solar storm risk, or move to the center of the new Valley of the Sun. We've got another geoengineering paper suggesting caution, and I'm going to show these every time one of them hits a reputable journal. Weather modification can have fairly reliable short-term effects on temperature, but longer term things get muddy, and in terms of precipitation effects, they are not sure they would be helping anything at all. In fact, they may be making things worse, and at best they say to expect mixed or uncertain results, which is a generous description. No fans of weather modification here at this channel. There are two points this article seeks to make. First, we can add rainbow trout to the long list of fish, birds, mammals, plants, and insects that use Earth's magnetic field for various functions, from navigational heading to reproduction cycling. And today we find not only are the trout behaviorally affected by magnetic pulses, but it's the pulses that are most likely to result from solar storms. This suggests that the tons of psychological studies on humans during such solar storms have play in other animals too. They want both the magnetoreception and the solar effect to be solidified. Up next, there is no means of ascertaining just how interconnected the entire universe is. The entanglement, the connections driving chaos theory, the ether, the force, intuition, and many more are indeed involved in spooky action at a distance, to the tune where trying to study may affect the results. We are all connected, and we may just have to leave it at that. Always love it when a split second of light from space throws astronomers into a tizzy. The supernova, they say, already takes great interest as the record-declining nova they've seen. But also, it's homeless. There does not appear to be a host galaxy for the nova progenitor, which makes no sense. And indeed, they ran down the entire list of supernova modeling and none satisfactorily explains what they saw here. Love a good mystery. And we're off to a little red dot that you wouldn't care about if it wasn't circled. We've gone over how galaxies, quasars, and protoclusters of galaxies appeared too massive and too early to reconcile Big Bang cosmology. And I swear, not a week has gone by without the problem deepening. Here we find that one of those first galaxies is not only the oldest of the dying galaxies seen, but its core must have formed a billion years earlier than previous studies said could have happened. Seriously, that too early situation is getting worse and worse for the timeline the deeper into space we look couple climate articles to close here. First, we find more long-term cycle modulation. Here it's the 60-year oscillation of the Asian monsoon, heavily influenced by solar activity now and in the last interglacial 100,000 years ago. And folks, lock this one in the chamber and pull back the hammer. This is a sea-level conversation piece of ammunition if I've ever seen it. Not only does the rising and falling of land account for the uneven sea level changes that we notice across the world, but if it seems like we've heard so much about losing so much ice and so much about sea level rise and yet your favorite beach resort is still there and doing fine, 
you are not alone. Yes, storm surges are getting much worse, but on the calm days we find most tides about where they used to be. And it turns out that seafloor deformation under the extra water weight is as important a factor in sea level rise as deep ocean volume changes. It is even possible that with more melt water, the land will have even larger proportionate drops. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We did get that fifth episode out in the Planets in the Sun series last night. Hopefully you were caught up on the first four. The next special video is part six of the climate series, likely coming tomorrow, but hey, might work fast today, you never know. New deeper look for website members as well. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we're gonna do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.